Hi, everybody. <laughs> we are going to wait just a minute or two to make sure that we get everybody uh, who intends to sign on. Wait another minute or two. Ellie, how many, how many families do you think will be joining us? Hopefully everybody. Okay. <laughs> We're getting close. Okay. It's eight o'clock. Do you think we can get started? Okay. So welcome everybody. I'm Rachel Hanloff, one of the lower school principals, and I am so excited to welcome you all to our kindergarten town hall. We cannot wait <laughs> to bring your children back into the building. We are really so excited that we have this opportunity uh, to see them in person. And I want to start our evening. I'm going to turn it over briefly to Rabbi Dr. Kassan, who wants to give you an official, official welcome to Berman. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ms. Henloff. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. This is really a special evening because we get to welcome our kindergarten students and families back onto our campus and into Berman Hebrew Academy. Um, I wanted to start as we always like to do with the Dvar Torah. Before I do, um, I just wanted to give a big mazal tov because this is our first gathering together since the Agion family had a baby. So Jonathan, we see that you're on. Mazal tov. Either you're here because you're trying to get out of diaper duty. Oh no, you have the baby. Okay. So you are not getting on. You're, you're both on baby duty and attending this. So major mazal tov. Very, very cute baby. And we're so happy to have you and mazal tov to you and the entire family. So um, in this week's Parsha, Parsha Choftim, it actually says, um, there's a beautiful pasuk that says, sorry, I just lost my place. Tamim tiye im Hashem elokecha. Tamim tiye. You should be tam with Hashem, your God. So what does tam mean, right? Because we actually all know the word tam. Uh, in, our, in our Pesach Seder, we actually know that the four sons, right? We have the Chacham and the Rasha, Shnei Deli Shol, and one of them is Tam. And typically, Tam is described as the simple son, right? We have the wise son, and we have the Rasha, the wicked one, and we have the one who does not know how to ask. And then we have the Tam, which is typically in our Seder, the simpleton or the simple son. But there's also um, other interpretations of the word Tam, because is, is, is the pasuk in this week's parsha really telling us, simple, you should be with your God? Right, because it says, tamim So what does the pasuk actually mean? 
So I actually saw a couple of beautiful uh, interpretations. One is from Rav Yosef Yitzchak of Lubavitch. He says, the simpleton perceives God with pure and innocent faith. There's a purity in the word Tom. And the second uh, interpretation that I, that I heard um, actually says that what it means is what, what the Torah speaks of when it says uh, in Tzmimut is the sense of being whole or wholehearted. And I thought this was really beautiful and very apropos for what we are talking about tonight, because the reason why we love kindergarten so much is because they are the youngest learners in our lower school. They are embarking on their educational journey and really coming into their own and learning themselves and learning about their peers and learning about the world around them and starting to learn beginning readers and starting to explore the world through reading and through different things that they're learning. There's a certain pure innocence and faith in what they're learning, in their teachers, in the Torah, in the tefillah, in everything that they do, there's, there's a certain purity and innocence. And there's also a wholeheartedness that they bring to the learning that we find in kindergarten, which is why uh, many of us know that there are signs that sometimes we see that says, everything I know about life I learned in kindergarten, right? I love that because really in both senses of the term, both in the simpleton sense, of really, if we peel everything down that we know about life, we really did learn in kindergarten, but also in the wholehearted sense, in the purity sense, in the innocent sense, that what we see of the world and the way we want to see the world is sometimes through the lens of what we, want, what we see in our kindergarten students and the way that they approach the learning and the way that they approach their peers and their teachers and everything around them. We are so excited because this also means that we come wholehearted to the table with wanting to make sure that your kindergarten students, your kindergarten children have an amazing year. And our teachers do that. Our teachers are so enthusiastic. When you walk into the kindergarten rooms and watch our teachers, there's no better word to use than the tzmimut, than the wholehearted nature by which they bring to the work with your children. And they actually did that even in this conversation when the rest of the world and even the rest of our school is thinking about coming back or not coming back our kindergarten teachers are eager to learn with your children in, the, in a very wholehearted, pure, innocent sense. And that is incredibly inspiring. So that was the students and our teachers. And I wanna bring this full circle to everybody here tonight as well. In order for us to be wholehearted, that means that we all have to come at this with one heart, with one whole heart. And what that means is, we are being incredibly careful and incredibly diligent in being able to bring back our kindergarten onto campus. And that means that we wanna keep every student safe. It means we wanna keep all of our teachers safe. It means we wanna do things in a way that we can actually be wholehearted in the decision that we're making to be with our children, with your children, our students together. What that means is that I'm asking, I'm pleading with everybody here tonight, every parent in our kindergarten to own that wholeheartedly to understand the responsibilities that come with that, to understand that the choices that we make are actually going to, to could be the, the, the factor between us being able to, to return to campus or not return to campus. It could be the factor between us being able to be at school or having to quarantine. It, this year, it has major implications more than any other year. And that means that if you're coming wholeheartedly into our school, that means I, I beg you, you're gonna start getting messages that you need to do symptoms checks in the morning. That means that if your child is sick, that you keep them home because you understand that there's a global uh, responsibility here. If they're not feeling well, to make sure that you communicate with our nurse so we know. To do the, to do the things that we do like we always do, wholeheartedly for ourselves, for our children, for our teachers, for our school, but also whole, wholeheartedly in the sense of one heart as a community because we are all in this together. So I beg you to work with us to be able to return to campus in a safe and healthy way, to keep all of our children and our teachers together wholeheartedly and to, and to maintain that through the year. Thank you so much for your partnership and we are sincerely looking forward to being together wholeheartedly back on our campus. Thank you so much, Rabbi Dr. Kastan. I'm also, I, I wanna take this opportunity to introduce my co-principal, Susie Israel, who you'll hear from a little bit later in this talk. And I also, we are so blessed that all of our kindergarten team is on this, uh, on, the, on the call right now. And I wanna make sure to, to share their names with you. Leah Bressler, our general studies teacher, 
and her assistant, Hani Kreitman. <laughs> uh, Anat Peretz, one of our Limude Kodesh teachers, and her assistant, Ella Bar Moshe. It got much harder to spotlight everyone than I thought. That's okay. <laughs> I'm going I'm to tell you the order. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, that's fine. I'm going to also introduce Ellen Gibson, who's new to Berman. She will be our second general studies teacher, and she'll be working with Allison Lopez, <clears throat> who's returning to us. And last but not least, Michal Dorfman, our, Limure, our second Limure Kodesh teacher, and her assistant, Rahel Abate. And we also have Mr. Zach who is our low, fabulous lower school counselor, and he is also on the call. Uh, again, we are, so it just is a glimmer of the enthusiasm they have for what we are about to do in welcoming your children back to school. I have a lot of information to share with you. Uh, I said, I said, Hani. <laughs> Susie, okay, Mrs. Israel's chatting me. What about Hani? But I'm pretty sure I said that. Okay, so, I have a lot of information to share with you. I have some notes, so I'm sure not to forget anything. <clears throat> but um, I also want to let you know that Sarah Sickerman, our Director of Marketing and Communications, and Ellie Levine, our Director of Admissions, are also both on the call, and they will be monitoring the chat so that I am certain to, to get to all the questions that you might have and to make sure I don't forget anything. And we'll also email you uh, sometime tomorrow with a video of this talk. And in that email will also be some helpful links, including our Shalva Bashuva blueprint and um, a, a push for if you'd like to sign up for hot lunch, you can still do that. <laughs> so the first thing I want to share with you is that while kindergarten is going to look a little bit different this year, it is still the same amazing, fabulous kindergarten program. And there are lots of things that we're doing, going to do, to keep your children safe and uh, offer you our amazing uh, full academic program. The first thing I wanna say is that the licensing, one of the reasons that we are able to, to open our kindergarten is because we are partnering with our preschool who has a, a license from the Montgomery office of the Montgomery County Department of Education and Office of Child Care. And that license allows us to be, um, it's considered a daycare and it allows us to open our preschool. And what we've done is we have, it, we've made that license larger and included the kindergarten in our license. And that gives us the opportunity to bring our kindergartners into the building as long as we follow all of the Montgomery County guidelines for child care centers. And I can't thank Rebecca Gutierrez, our preschool director, enough. She has filled us in on all of the things that need to happen to be a licensed daycare and to add the kindergarten into the license. And we could not do this without her. And we will continue to partner with her to make sure we are following all the rules. At the same time, I want to tell you that the kindergarten is part of our formal lower school program. And it falls under mine and my colleague Susie Israel's supervision, and you should continue to be in touch with us if you have questions or concerns regarding kindergarten. So that's a little bit about our licensing. I want you to know that for kindergarten, our first day of school is Tuesday, September 1st. And uh, that is different than our preschool. Our first day is Tuesday, September 1st. It will be a full day. And in an effort to smooth that transition back to preschool, we do invite all of you to bring your children to our teacher meet and greet on Friday, August 28th. At that program, it coincides with our supply pickup, but you as kindergarten families don't need to pick anything up because we are bringing your children to school. So what you might want to do is actually bring your supplies with you. Uh, it is our hope and plan that on the first day of school, a kindergartner will exit the car from carpool line and walk into school on their own. Um, I know that's a big ask, <laughs> and we're going to do everything we can to, to ease them into that transition, but it might be difficult for them to bring all their supplies in by themselves. So if you'd like to, again, like to drop those things off on August 28th, uh, as long as you bring them in a bag and the things are labeled with your child's name, we are happy to receive them. And if this transition to kindergarten feels overwhelming or you think 
uh, it will be difficult for your child. What I'd like you to do is be in touch with me via email or to call, uh, call me at school and I will get in touch with you and arrange for an alternate plan that you think will work better for your child. I'm just checking my notes. Um, all right, the protocols. Our protocols for, for, for sharing toys and some of the things that are happening are actually very similar to the preschool protocols. And some of them, some of you who might have sat through Rebecca's talk last week will hear them and think that they sound familiar and they should. So we are starting our day at 8 a.m. And so you may arrive at eight o'clock in the morning. You will drive through um, the carpool lane and we are asking you to fill out a symptom and family questionnaire each morning on something we call the alert media app. We are going to run a practice test with this app at the beginning of next week and you'll be receiving an email from school with the information of how to do that. Um, once you've completed the app, you'll be, uh, we'll, we'll know that you've completed it, we'll let you on to campus and you'll pull into the carpool line where you will, we're going to ask you to take your child's temperature with your thermometer and show it to a Berman employee. And once uh, those two steps have, have been done, uh, we will invite your child to exit the car and come into the building where a, an assistant or a teacher will be waiting, waiting right by the door to direct them to the kindergarten classrooms, which are all very close to the entrance of school. We are going to ask you when you come to school in the car and you roll your window down to show us the thermometer and take the temperature that you should be wearing a mask uh, and your child should be wearing a mask so we can keep the staff and faculty who are helping us with this process safe. <clears throat> I said their child will be directed to their classroom when they walk through the door. We are actually going to let our kindergarten students use their lockers but we are assigning them lockers near their classroom, you know, uh, spaces apart so that no child is using a locker right next to another child because we're not using the lockers in the rest of the lower school. We have access to lockers and we think it will be a nice way for the kindergartners to organize their materials and feel like big kids that they have a locker and they're coming to school. Uh, masks. All children in Montgomery County, whether it's a daycare center or not, who are above the age of two are asked to wear masks. And that's not any different in school. We are asking all children to wear masks. Uh, they are, uh, the times when children are allowed to remove their masks are when they are eating or running or climbing or exerting themselves outside. <clears throat> and uh, we are supposed to keep as much physical distance as, you know, to keep that six feet of physical distance. And we do recognize that that might be difficult. And uh, sometimes we do break that barrier. And there are, especially when we're giving direct care, which we, we will give with love. <laughs> uh, and direct care in kindergarten looks like somebody tying shoes or comforting an upset child or um, helping them find something. We love your children, we want to be with them, and we recognize that there are times when we do need to engage in that way. And for that reason, we're asking our students and teachers to wear masks. Our teachers also might wear face shields if they would like. And um, that in an effort, again, to keep everybody safe. Um, we are also going to use our outdoor spaces as much as possible. In the beginning of the school year, when most of our campus is virtual, we have ample opportunity and ample space. We have playgrounds and tennis courts and tracks and shaded areas, and we will invite our kindergarten children to learn outside, to eat lunch outside, and uh, use our beautiful outdoor space as much as possible. And when the rest of the school returns to campus, um, we get to go first <laughs> and we will take the, we will uh, keep our kids outside as much as possible and we're going to have to take turns, but we will use our outdoor spaces. And um, again, we will also invite the students to eat lunch outside when, when weather permits. And one more time, a plug for hot lunch. If you still want hot lunch, you can sign up for that in the email that we send out tomorrow. One of the other things I, I see that I have forgotten to tell you is that we are encouraging hand washing as much as possible in kindergarten. In, according to the Montgomery County Office of Child Care, 
uh, children in kindergarten and preschool are not allowed to use Purell or hand sanitizer. We want to encourage the use of soap and water. We have a sink in every one of our kindergarten classrooms. We have sinks in the hallway. And we even added a, a, a bay of sinks outside the, the kindergarten playground. So they will have that opportunity to wash their hands as much as possible. We are also going to minimize uh, shared supplies. So for example, each child will have their own set of non-washable art supplies. So paints or markers or things of that type. And then with um, other supplies that aren't washable, so for example, we have lots of books in kindergarten. Books and toys that aren't washable will, will be given to children in, in bags. And so your child might receive um, the Monday book bag and they'll, or the Monday toy bag and they'll play with those items. And then at the end of the day, those toys will be put away and they won't appear back into uh, to another child to play until Wednesday. So we have Monday, Wednesday, Friday toys and Tuesday, Thursday toys. So there'll be a constant rotation and flow of the things that children will be allowed to play with. We also will structure playtime so that smaller groups of children are playing in different areas of the classroom so that we can maintain as much physical distance uh, as possible. With regards to the playground, while we have lots of outdoor spaces, only one pod, for example, could use the actual play structures at a time. So we will invite one pod to use that during one recess and a different pod to use it at a different recess time. Uh, again, they, will, they won't be um, playing, the pods won't mix. Your child's class will be their child's classroom for the, uh, for the duration. We also have a full array of specials that will continue. We have the kindergarten classroom will have gym twice a week with Coach Jay. Coach Jay will run those classes outside as much as possible. They will have uh, music with Moralea, who also teaches in our preschool. She will push into the classroom and she'll take them outside when she can or run the class in the building. They will have art with Mrs. Sachs, science with Moralisi, and our students also have the opportunity to meet once a week with Mr. Zach. The task force has let us know that we can invite these specialists into the classroom and they can run a lesson and the teacher and assistant might facilitate the giving of materials so that we're not introducing another person into the pod, but they can do that lesson in person, which we think will be very valuable for our kindergarten students. We also will have projectors and screens in each classroom so that we could have virtual visitors or go on a virtual field trip. And if in an unfortunate circumstance that we do have a child who needs to quarantine, they'll be able to zoom into the classroom. <clears throat> and uh, if for some reason we had to send a whole pod home, we would be able to offer live Zoom classes uh, when the, the pod was at home. Uh, that mentioned a little bit about quarantine. If we do find ourselves in a situation that we want to require a child or pod to quarantine, the health department will, will make those decisions with our school nurse. Uh, and I'm happy to say that we, not, we will have two school nurses this year and there will be a nurse on campus when we bring the preschool and kindergarten back into the building. And she will communicate with you if you have a child who's not feeling well, and she will also facilitate the communication with the county and the health department. We are really trying to do everything we can to minimize the risk for your children and for our teachers and our families. And we, like Rabbi Dr. Kassan said, we're asking you to partner with us uh, to follow, um, to limit your exposure to people outside of school, to use PPE, to follow the CDC and our governor's guidelines for travel and quarantine, and to really help us keep your children uh, you and your families and our staff as safe as possible. Um, I want to give my, my trusted colleague Susie Israel an opportunity to speak and share with you a little bit more about the kindergarten uh, communication and in the kindergarten program and the kindergarten program. Thank you. Thank you, Rachel. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, that everybody. That was a lot. Welcome, everybody. It's wonderful to see you here tonight. Um, it is an honor to be embarking on this journey with 
with all of you. And I want to especially welcome those of you who are sending your very first child to kindergarten. Um, I, I have graduated children from high school and even, thank God, married a child off, but I have never had as, as big of a cry as I had sending my first little one off to kindergarten. It's a, it's a very special moment. And so um, I want to give a virtual hug to all of you who are crossing that threshold here with us um, this year. So welcome. One of the things that we wanna make sure we tell you about is because the learning in kindergarten and the development that takes place in kindergarten is so robust and transformative, we really want to make sure that we include you as much as possible in the development of your children. And one of the ways that we do that is through an app called Seesaw for Families. So I want to encourage you to download this app. We will send out a letter today that will include, tomorrow, sorry, that will include the recording from this evening and um, a link to, to give you a little more information about that app. And your, fam your classroom teachers will send you a family QR code to connect you as a family and specifically to your child but I want to tell you some of the benefits of being connected with us through Seesaw, especially in this very strange and unusual year that we are in. We, we usually love to have families walk their children in and engage a little bit with the teacher and look around the classroom. And in this year, of course, we are trying to make sure that the adults of our community don't walk into the building, very unfortunately and very sadly. One of the proudest things for us is to show you how wonderful and engaging our classrooms are, and this year that's not a possibility for us. So this Seesaw platform is a really robust communication tool for us, and the students will learn how, even in kindergarten, to take pictures of their work to share with you, um, to draw on the Seesaw app tool, share videos of what they're doing, and the, the teachers will, of course, do that as well. But it's really a wonderful way for you to provoke and invite an educational conversation with your child when they get home. So if you see a piece of work that is shared by the teacher or the student on the Seesaw app, you can have a conversation with your child that includes, tell me a little bit more about what you learned about this giraffe. And so, we really encourage you to use the Seesaw app as a springboard for conversation, and we will use it as one of our modes of communication with you. It's really a wonderful and engaging tool. In that Seesaw app, and we'll send you some information about it, you will have the opportunity to choose whether you'd like to receive a daily digest of the updates, which I recommend, or if you wanna be updated every time your child does something. So if you wanna be updated every time your child does something, that's absolutely fine, but it, the, it will ping your phone and let you know that your child added something today. And you know, as the day goes on, you'll get several pings. Um, I see some of my veteran parents um, smiling knowingly. You can also choose to get a daily digest and you can tell the app what time to send you that digest and it'll show you everything that your child did that day. Um, you might find that to be more user-friendly. <laughs> because your kids are busy and they're going to take lots of pictures and the, the teachers and the teaching assistants are going to take lots of pictures especially this year to make sure that you are as engaged as possible um, there is a platform on that app to send messages to the teacher we do encourage you to comment on your child's work on that app and to like your child's work when you comment on the child's work the teacher can see that you've commented which is great i want you to know that only you will see your child's work you won't you won't see everybody else's work and, and the other parents in the class won't see your child's work. But you can also choose to send the teacher a message through Seesaw. We actually encourage you to use email if you have a message that you wish the teacher to see, um, especially if it's an important communication. Um, but Seesaw is a great place for you to comment on their work and their development. And it's also going to archive everything so that you will keep over the years um, a, a real ledger of the progress of the children. So we absolutely love it. And especially in the, in the year that we're in right now, we wanna encourage you to engage with us there. Um, finally, I, I just want to take a moment to acknowledge that you are here tonight because you have made the decision, uh, despite the difficult times that we are living in, to make the investment in educating your child in a Jewish day school. And we don't take that lightly. Um, and in these times of uncertainty, it means that you realize that the investment that you make in Jewish education is one of the most profitable and lucrative 
that you could and that it will pay dividends for life for you. Um, and we want to acknowledge how inspiring it is to engage with you, especially as you embark on your beginnings of kindergarten. And we know that you understand that the relationships that your children will make, both with other children and with teachers and rabbis, will be lifelong investments in their future. We will work together with you to ensure that when your children graduate from our school, which I know feels like ages and ages from now, but it's not, <laughs> that they will that they will have a deep appreciation of what makes them members of this Am Kadosh that we are all invested in. And I personally am extremely proud to be part of the educational team at a school that strives every day to make the learning better and more robust. And you will have a really clear sense of that with this incredible kindergarten team. So I'm very proud of being part of that. And I want you to be very proud also to be engaging in a school that is as committed in education as, as this one is. So my bracha to you as we are now in the month of Elul together is that we all have a year of health and life and the fulfillment of all of Hashem's blessings. So if you have questions for us, we're here to answer them. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I have a few questions that came in through the chat box, so I will um, share those with you, but also introduce myself as a kindergarten parent as well. I'm trying to remember that I'm wearing both hats here. Um, so one of the questions that just popped in is if the kids need headphones both at school and at home. It was on both of the supplies lists. Uh, so they wouldn't be able to, it is something that would come back and forth with them. They don't need the headphones at home uh, if they're, when we're meeting in person. So what would happen is that if for some reason we have to do a virtual, we have to move kindergarten to the virtual platform, we would send the headphones home with you and they could use them at home. And then when we came back in person, they would bring them back. Great, thank you. Um, and then I just wanna clarify about the hand sanitizer. So it was originally on our kindergarten supplies list. Um, but because we are operating under the Office of Child Care License, they do not allow hand sanitizer. Um, so you do not need to get that. Congratulations. Um, and there will be lots of hand washing throughout the day. Um, and then I wanted to ask a question about the carpool. Um, when the parents are driving through the carpool lane, if they need to take their child's temperature or unbuckle, will there be an opportunity for the parent to get out of the car um, and do those things to, to help their child. Yes. The, 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 oh, you're a little quiet. We have, we have plotted this out and we are going to run a, a staff simulation and we're looking for your Rachel, right sorry. We can't hear you. I don't know what happened. I don't know if it was just me, but your microphone cut out a little bit. Hi, can you hear me now? I don't know what to do. <laughs> I think that there's a Zoom monster um, <laughs> in our Zoom. Yeah, because you're also fluffy. Um, but can you guys hear me okay? You can give me a thumbs up. All right. Um, so there is an opportunity, the way that we're working out carpool, <laughs> there is an opportunity for parents to get out of the car, take their temperature. I know I have very short arms. I would never be able to reach back in my minivan to take my child's temperature. Um, so that is an opportunity. Um, not to worry, we'll try to make the process as smooth um, and e as easy as possible. Um, not to put Shmaria Gassner on the spot, he's our new executive director, but there's a few questions that came through about busing um, and when families will here, get clarification if busing is running. Yes, uh, we will be in touch with those families uh, shortly, uh, early next week about the bus routes. And we are intending to have a route from uh, Kent Mill and Potomac. Thank you. And if you have any questions about busing, um, Shmaria is the, is the best person to reach out to. 
Um, just trying to look through the questions. There are a lot about buses. Um, how are bathroom runs handled this year? Um, knowing that kindergartners aren't the most thorough hand washers, is someone going to be with them? So we, we are going to constantly be reminding the, the children about how to, you still can't hear me? But I do think I know where you're going with this. <laughs> We're going to be constantly reminding our students how to wash their hands. Proper hand washing etiquette is really important. It's always been very important at Berman. So um, we're going to keep that reminder and keep those lessons. We have signage that's going to be posted in the bathrooms as far as the steps that you need to take for hand washing. Um, Rachel, are our, our assistants going to be accompanying, accompanying children to the bathrooms to give me You can type in the chat if it's easier and I will look into the next question. Um, Mr. Zach, I'm gonna put you on the spot and we'll hope that your microphone is working. Um, but as our students and our, our kids have been home for all of these months um, without any, you know, the plans haven't been normal, they were in virtual school last year. Is there anything that we as parents can be starting to help them if they're expressing stress or anxiety about returning to school, what can we do as parents and what will the school do to help these students as well? How's my mic? Wonderful. Uh, so obviously, you know, as we approach the first day of school, I think these feelings are very normal. One thing we do for some children who are particularly nervous um, is we will usually we'll meet necessarily in person or on video with your teacher or me um, before the first day of school to relieve some of these anxieties, um, especially now more than ever. I think that that is definitely something that we can do. Um, I think it would also be really helpful because we're going to be wearing masks when we meet them and that will be very different for them that this will this will de stress some of the things. I think part of your question was um, how to get them necessarily ready for kindergarten and all the social challenges and be, you know being new to the lower school. Well, uh, part of our social emotional learning curriculum and part of just the teachers um, approach and mentality in general is establishing norms right away, obviously, as, as any educational expert would know that they're going to establish rules right away and expectations. So this will really be the focus of the, you know, as to getting the children acclimated right away and, and comfortable with one another. And I assume that there will be a lot of also uh, protocols as far as, um, you know, being careful with COVID as well. Um, so there'll be a lot of things that, that they go through on the first week of school. But I've spoken with some parents already, and if there's anything that, um, if there's any particular thing that your child is worried about as school approaches, I'd be happy to speak with you individually. You can reach out to me through email. Um, and, you know, we have a week to kind of prepare for this, so we'll make time. Um, but I, I think that definitely if that's something that you're concerned about to reach out to me and we'll, we'll talk about that together. Thank you. Morelea wrote in the chat that there is a whole plan to teach the kids how to wash their hands. Um, so that's helpful. I'm just reading through, I've been typing um, answers to people as well. Um, I'm sorry about the sound that's going on here. And um, I don't know if Susie, if you want to try to, to speak again. Um, the kindergarten students um, do not share a bathroom with the preschool. They're going to be using separate bathrooms. Um, so that is fine. Um, class sizes. So under, um, I believe the classes are um, no more than 15 people, including the teacher and assistant in each classroom. Is that correct? I like this head shaking. Perfect. <laughs> um, the hot lunch system. So um, I know that we've plugged the hot lunch a couple of times. Um, the most exciting hot lunch is seashell pasta for those that were in the trivia night last night, um, or if you're an existing Berman family. Um, so the, the hot lunch system, basically lunches are going to be packaged and delivered to the child's classroom each day. If you signed up for, for lunch um, for the year, 
there's not there's nothing that you have to do you're already going to be loaded into the system and you'll get the the main meal item for the day um, if you want to make a change then you'll be able to go into the system and do that um, and we'll send more information about hot lunch and the process and where you can see the lunch menu early next week um, the instructional time will not be less that question came in between nine and 12 students in each class Sorry, just reading through the chat class placements will be sent out on Monday I believe um, and I think that that is it I'm going to write Mr. Zach's email address in the chat, but we'll also include it in the message um, in the email tomorrow. Um, so I'm going to turn it back over to Rabbi Dr. Pistan and hope that his mic is working. <laughs> Can you hear me? All right, great. Uh, well, thank you again for joining us so much. Uh, just two uh, last things that I wanted to leave us off with. One is um, we talked about uh, with its mimut and the wholeheartedness of our community and that we are in this together with one heart and really considering our communal responsibility. I just want to remind us all that um, although we are looking forward to the first day of school, we're going to blink and it's going to be the Chagim. And I'm sure we are all already starting to think of the Chagim. And that typically means where we're going, where we're headed, who we're gonna be with. And I know that all of us really wanna uh, follow our typical Chagim plans, but this year is anything but typical. And I wanna remind us that the kindergarten is our first foray back onto campus. So uh, please, please uh, make sure that you are familiar with the state of Maryland guidelines for any travel and travel restrictions. Uh, there are actually uh, restrictions by the state of Maryland. If you, uh, whether you're going to a hotspot or um, you know you actually, uh, must quarantine when you return before you can return to school or your kids can return to school. Uh, and even if you do not go to a hot spot, you would uh, have to get tested and actually show a negative COVID test. So there are actually guidelines and we will actually send them out in terms of our own burn guidelines. We will follow those as well. Um, but I want to make sure that people are aware of that as you make your plans, whether that means that you're traveling somewhere or whether you're bringing people in from out of town, depending on where they're coming from, uh, making sure that we are keeping our exposure down. I know that this sounds so... Um, contrary to who we are, right? I'm talking about Tzmimut and being wholehearted with our God, right? As it says in our Parsha this week, that wholeheartedness means that we open our homes and we open our tables and we have our guests and we share a Chagim together. It's just not that kind of year. And I just want us to understand and embrace the fact that as difficult as it may be, and as much pressure as we might feel about the Chagim and who we want to spend it with, we need to remember that the people that we have to commit to right now are the people on this Zoom call right now. Are the people here, are the teachers, are the students, are the families that we're looking at tonight, these are the people that we have a commitment to when we make decisions about our own chagim because the decisions we make are going to impact each other and really going to impact whether or not we can remain on campus or not. So please uh, make sure that you familiarize yourself with that and we will send out the travel advisors as well. And the last thing I wanted to say is that I talked about the tzmimut of our children and of our teachers and of our parents but I, I want to make sure that before we leave tonight that I talk about the tzmimut, the wholehearted nature of, of our principles, because our wholeheartedness within our kindergarten and in our entire low, lower school actually beats, and I'm saying this sincerely, actually beats to the heartbeat of Rachel Hanloff and Susie Israel. Their wholehearted nature in terms of the way they, they make sure to meet every child's needs and every teacher's needs and fight for every kid and make sure that we have what we need it is really this lower school beats to their heartbeat. And I wanna give them a tremendous Akarta Tov publicly for everything that they do and leading us here and leading us to this point tonight where we can bring everybody back to our campus. Thank you so much. Thank you all, good night. Their mics will be better next time. <laughs>